Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome back to the modding of Isaac with light. And today's episode is on trinkets and tier flags. They've updated the Lua and it now includes enumerations for the various tier flags and at least slightly helpful descriptions of what they are such that you know what they do. So let's get started. Just get going. See how it all works. So we're going to start a new run. Who do we want to use? Let's use Apollyon one. So we're going to start with Mom's box because we're playing around with trinkets. And we're in just a nice old empty room. Let's fill it with some things. So we just start summoning some trinkets and I have a little bit of code to make it such that we uh, recharge every single time we press the button so we can just press it really fast. And you'll notice one of these things is not like the others. That's right, Beaker. How did Beaker get in here? Let's go find out. He's full of something. No, we don't want to bag lunch. Beaker is full of something. So then we find a room with some rocks in it and we destroy them mercilessly. Uh, we should probably kill a few things such that we don't, you know, die right away. And let's put Beaker down. Leave Beaker right there. And now we can't destroy rocks. Oh. So having Beaker means you can destroy whatever rocks you like. He's giving you acid tears. And then you put him down and your tears reset back to normal. So that's what we're going to do this episode. We're going to show you how to make Beaker, how to make him show up in a run when using mom's box and how to make him give you tears that can destroy rocks on contact. Uh, oh, they can also destroy doors. So you can escape. <laughs> so let's head over to the code and see how it's done. So first, let's take a look at the, uh, the mod itself. Just have a regular old folder as usual with main.lua, resources and content. Resources, GFX, items, trinkets, beaker. Now this is just for convenience sake such that you don't have to change the XML. This way you know where to find said beaker. It's a ping, if you ever have that red outline, remember, save your pings as 32 bits, kids. Then if we go into content, there's items.xml, which looks a little something like this. The items part at the top is the same as you'll find in the resources folder. It's the same we used for collectibles. Trinkets are found in the same file. They're just all the way down at the bottom. GFX slash items. Since it is a trinket, it just assumes that it has that trinket folder as well. So like it assumes there's collectibles when you're working with the items that you pick up. Just like uh, passive and active items, you can add a cache to it. In this case, the tier flag cache. You give it a description, that's the subtitle. You give it a name, that's the big name. And then you give the GFX, which is the name of the file that it looks like. So that was the beaker that I showed you just moments ago. So when you pick this up or put it down, it triggers the tier flag cache. So moving on from there, all we really need to see is main.lua. This is where the real magic happens. Standard beginning, register your mod, set up game. Then you set trinket type dot your trinket thingy to be Isaac dot get trinket ID by name and then the name of your trinket. Mine happens to be Beaker. I use this for just general compatibility sake. I'm going to do an episode soon on testing whether or not this helps you have some cross mod communications. Then local Beaker swap. This is going to tell you when you should do the bait and switch for your beaker because I don't know if just adding it to the list is good enough to add it to the game. It might, it might not. Haven't done rigorous testing just yet, but this is guaranteed to work. Then this is garbage. We're getting rid of it. That is something I'm gonna look into. It didn't do what I wanted. So down here on cache is where you do the things with the tier flags. On update is when you're just looking every frame to see things happening. We have standard get frame uh, frame count one things. This happens at the start of the run. 
So this is a post key effect update. So this is player effect update, passive effect update, whichever you want to call it. It gives you the player 30 times per second, roughly. You match this with that, you're good to go. Get frame count one. Roll is player. Get trinket RNG, trinket type, trinket beaker. Because beaker, he's got a, he's a trinket. He's got RNG associated with him that should be seated with the run. But if it is, it, it really ought to be. It should be seated with the run. So this roll should be standardized per seed. Then we take our beaker swap and set it to be roll, colon, random, int, trinket type, dot, num, trinkets. So this counts up how many trinkets there are in the base game. It's an enumeration. If they update themselves somehow magically, this will change with it without me having to change the code. Gives me a random int from probably zero to number of trinkets, so it's possible that your trinket could not appear, but that's okay. And then we set beaker swap to be that number. That is which trinket are we swapping out to have beaker? And then I give the player mom's box for fun. Then if our active charge is zero, we give ourselves a full charge. That's how I was able to tap the space bar so fast. This is very simple code. Update, active charge equals zero, set it to full. Super easy. Then we loop over all of the entities in the room. We've done this many times, but some people still forget. Four, and then this key doesn't matter. Entity in pairs, Isaac get room entities parentheses. Now, some people like using the four I equals one comma uh, Octothorpe entities, where entities is Isaac.getRoom entities, and then using entities uh, bracket I close bracket. It's a matter of style. I like this style better. So we look at every entity at the room, in the room, every frame. If that entity has type entity pickup and has a variant, pickup variant, pickup trinket, because trinkets are pickups just like collectibles, and then has a subtype of our swap type. Then, entity.subtype equals trinket type dot trinket beaker. Now, just for fun, let's comment this out, save it, head back over into Isaac, and see whether or not we can get beaker from mom's box without bait and switch. And so we just hammer on the space bar for a while. There are 122 trinkets. Oh, geez. Oh, there's Beaker. So it turns out you don't actually need to do the bait and switch. Mom's box is able to spawn Beaker without our code that spawns Beaker. So what I just showed you, it's not strictly necessary, but I wanted to reinforce the bait and switch because there are certain certain situations in which we, you will want to do it. But if we head back over into this code, this part, unnecessary. Beaker swap and the roll for it, unnecessary. Speaker swap in general, unnecessary. So let's run that test one more time, just to be absolutely certain. So many trinkets, so little time. Uh, we should probably get away from the door. And there's Beaker again. You don't actually need to do anything for it to be spawned by mom's box. It's glorious, isn't it? Oh, sorry. I have a bad habit of not showing you when things happen. But you heard me tapping on the space bar there. We've got Beaker again. No problems whatsoever spawning Beaker without bait and switch. No bait and switch necessary. So now let's show how he works. It's just a simple cache update. So we have MC Evaluate Cache, 
mod.on cache, so we run this. It takes two parameters, the player and the flag. Every single cache flag gets evaluated separately. So you go, if the flag equals cache flag dot cache underscore tier flag. If you want to do damage, use damage. You've seen this before. And so we're in the cache tier, the tier flag cache, and the player has trinket our beaker trinket. Trinket type dot trinket beaker. Then, and only then, do you take the tier flags of the player and set them equal to their tier flags, or, that's the pipe, that's on a QWERTY keyboard, it's directly above enter, you have the slash, and then you have the pipe. Tier flags dot tier acid. That's all there is to it. When you pick it up, it sees you have it, it gives you tier acid. If you put it down, it clears out your tier flags and reevaluates them and sees, okay, we start from nothing. What tiers should they have? If you have beaker, it gives you acid. If you don't have beaker, it doesn't give you acid, but you don't take it away. What happens if they've already got sulfuric acid tiers? You don't want to take them away just because they dropped beaker. They probably dropped beaker because they don't need him. They've got sulfuric tiers. So you're probably wondering, how do we get access to all these wonderful tier flags? Well, in the documentation, if you go up to modules, so it'll start out closed like this. You go to modules, it'll look like this, and you hit enumerations, and then you go all the way down to tier flags. And it'll look something like this. And then it lists all of these lovely things that you can make your tiers do. Remember that tier variants are how they look, tier flags are what they do. So if you want a tiny planet, tier orbit. If you want, ooh, fancy bombs, glitter bombs. Light from heaven, boogers. And then all the way down here, we've got acid. So you've got all these things that your tiers can do and you just add these flags to your player if you want it to be on every tier. But then you could also attach them to individual tiers, as we've shown before. You can attach it to layers. It'd be interesting to see what all these different things do with all the different things you can attach them to. Whew. But oddly enough, unlike the Vectors episode, this one is really short. It is incredibly easy to make trinkets. This is how to make your trinket do cash evaluation things. But if you want it to do other things, you can put it in on update and put the code there. You just need to check if player has trinket your trinket and then do whatever it does, whether it's adding it randomly to your tiers like we've demonstrated in other episodes, if it gives you the ability to stomp on rocks, if it gives you this, that or anything else. All you have to do is use this player has trinket somewhere in your code and then write code that does what you want. It can do anything a passive can do. It can randomly do what any active can do. It can do something totally new. It could just add different visual effects through rendering. Anything you want, it can probably do. It's just a matter of writing the code, but making it exist super duper easy. Now again, it's possible that things won't drop your trinket. And if they do, they just don't want to drop it for whatever reason, feel free to add the bait and switch code back in. But as for getting it from mom's box, that gives me a relative amount of confidence that it will drop randomly whenever a random trinket is asked for. That's all I've got for this episode. I will see you in the next episode of The Modding of Isaac with Light. <laughs>